There was a king and queen who used to say, Ah, if only we had a child every day. However, they did not have one. However, there was a time when the queen was taking a bath when a frog emerged from the water onto the land and told her, Your wish shall be fulfilled, you will have a daughter before the year is up. The frog's prediction came true, and the queen gave birth to a little girl who was so pretty that the king couldn't hold his excitement any longer and ordered a big feast. He invited not only his friends, acquaintances, but also the wise women, in the hope that they would be kind to the child. He had 13 of them in his kingdom, but only 12 golden plates were available for them to eat from, so one of them had to be left at home. The feast was lavishly attended, and at its conclusion, the wise women presented the infant with their magical gifts. One gave virtue, another gave beauty, a third gave wealth, and so on, with everything else one could ever want. The thirteenth of them suddenly entered after eleven of them had made their promises. She shouted loudly, the king's daughter shall in her fifteenth year prick herself with a spindle, and fall down dead in an effort to exact revenge on herself for not having been invited. She then turned around and left the room without saying anything more. Everyone was shocked, however, the twelfth, whose benevolent wish had not yet been expressed, came forward and said, It shall not be death, but a deep sleep of a hundred years, into which the princess shall fall, as she could not undo the evil sentence but could only soften it. The king ordered the burning of every spindle in the kingdom in an effort to spare his beloved child from misfortune. In the meantime, the young girl received numerous gifts from the wise woman because she was so beautiful, modest, kind, and wise that everyone who saw her was bound to love her. When she was fifteen years old, the king and queen were not home, so the young maiden was left completely alone in the palace. As a result, she explored numerous rooms and bedchambers to her heart's content before finally locating an old tower. She made her way up the winding, narrow staircase to a small door. When she turned the rusty key in the lock, the door opened to reveal an elderly woman spinning her flax in a small room in the middle of the room. The king's daughter responded, Good day, old dame, what are you doing in that place? The elderly woman stated, I am spinning, and nodded her head. What exactly is that that whirls about so happily? The girl said, and she picked up the spindle because she wanted to spin too. She pricked her finger with the spindle, but the magic order was carried out before she had even touched it. She also collapsed onto the bed that stood there at the exact moment she felt the sting and fell asleep. Additionally, this slumber covered the entire palace, the king and queen, who had just returned home, entered the great hall and began to fall asleep, along with the entire court. The dogs in the yard, the pigeons on the roof, the flies on the wall, and the horses all went to sleep in the stable, the cook, who was just going to pull the hair of the scullery boy because he had forgotten something, let him go and went to sleep. The roast meat stopped frizzling, and even the fire that was blazing on the hearth went to sleep. When the wind stopped blowing, not a single leaf on the trees in front of the castle moved. But a thorny hedge began to grow around the castle, and it got taller each year until it covered the entire structure, including the flag on the roof. At last, nothing of the castle could be seen. However, the tale of the charming sleeping briar rose, after the princess, spread throughout the land, prompting king's sons to occasionally attempt to enter the castle through the thorny hedge. However, they were unable to do so because the young people became entangled in the thorns, were unable to break free, and perished in agony as a result. A king's son returned to that country after many, many years and heard an old man talk about the thorn hedge and the castle behind it where a beautiful princess named Briar Rose had been sleeping for a hundred years, and that the entire court, including the king and queen, was also asleep. Additionally, his grandfather had informed him that numerous king's sons had already arrived and attempted to break through the thorny hedge, 
but they remained stuck in it and perished pitifully. After that, the young person declared, I am not afraid, I will go and see the beautiful briar rose. He didn't pay attention, despite the wise old man's efforts to dissuade him. However, the time had come for Briar Rose to reawaken and the hundred years had just passed. When the king's son got close to the thorn hedge, the only thing there were large, beautiful flowers. They broke off from one another by themselves, let him through unharmed, and then closed behind him like a hedge. He observed the sleeping horses and spotted hounds in the castle yard, the pigeons were perched on the roof, their heads concealed by their wings. The cook in the kitchen was still holding out his hand to seize the boy when he entered the house, the flies were asleep on the wall, and the maid was sitting by the black hen she was going to pluck. He continued on and came to the great hall, where he saw the entire court asleep and the king and queen sitting on the throne. After that, he continued on even further while everything was so quiet that even a breath could be heard. At last, he reached the tower and entered the small room where Briar Rose was sleeping by opening the door. He could not help but stare at her beauty as she lay there, and he kissed her while bending down. However, as soon as he kissed her, Briar Rose awoke, opened her eyes, and looked at him with a tender gaze. The king, queen, and the entire court awoke when they went down together, and they all looked at each other with great surprise. The horses in the courtyard also got up and shaken, the hounds rose to their feet and flailed their tails, the roof pigeons raised their heads from beneath their wings, turned, and flew out into the open country, the wallflies snuck back in, the meat was cooked by the kitchen fire, which lit up and flickered, the cook gave the boy a box on the ear that made him scream, and the maid plucked the bird ready for the spit as the joint turned and frizzled once more. The king's son's wedding to Briar Rose was then lavishly celebrated, and the couple lived happily to the end of their lives.